Hi, today we're going to be talking about lipids. I'm going to try to, to do this as quickly as possible. I'm going to leave out some details so we can talk about it in class and I can make the video a little bit shorter. So try to keep up and make sure you're writing down the questions that you have for things that you don't understand. So lipids, they are more commonly known as fats. And of the six elements, schnapps, that make up all the macromolecules, they're only made of three of them, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. There is one exception, though. There's a group of lipids that are actually made of phosphorus as well, so we'll talk about those more in detail later. But as you look at this, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, you're like, hey, that sounds a little bit like carbohydrates, because they're only made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. However, um, if you think about it, that's why if you eat too many carbohydrates, it could easily make you fat, because they could easily be converted one to the other. And so you're going to see that that's actually what's going to happen sometimes. Now, one characteristic I want you to definitely know about all lipids is that no matter which lipid you're talking about in all the categories that are on that paper is that they are hydrophobic. Hydro means water, phobic means fear. So they are afraid of water. They will repel water, which means they don't dissolve in it. They do not dissolve in water. That everybody knows when you put oil into water that the oil will go to the top and not mix in no matter how much you shake it in that salad dressing no matter how much you shake it the water is and the oil will not mix okay the different functions of lipids depend on what depends on what lipid you're actually talking about but they can range from energy storage they're actually much better at that than carbs are because that was one of their their functions as well they're really good at insulating and regulating your heat think of whales with blubber the blubber is actually just a bunch of fat and it keeps them warm they up, make up cell membranes so every single cell in your body and every single cell on this planet is made up of a type of lipid called phospholipids that we're going to talk about and the last thing that they're really good at is sending chemical messages they will actually send messages um, there are hormones that Hormones are lipids that go throughout your body and control different parts of your body and tell you, that tells them how to act under certain situations. The four different groups of lipids that we're going to be focusing on are triglycerides, phospholipids, steroids, and waxes. And I'm really going to concentrate on triglycerides and we're going to talk about cholesterol when it comes to steroids as well. So keep that in mind as well. So let's move on. The first thing I want you to know is that, remember that all Macromolecules have a monomer and a polymer. Lipids are kind of the exception. They have a monomer-like part, and that's called a fatty acid. So fatty acids are the monomer-like part of lipids. The reason that they're monomer-like parts are because there is one type of lipid that does not have them, so it's not a true monomer. Now, the structure of the fatty acid consists of a head and a tail. You have this picture on your paper, so make sure you label it. The tail part is down over here. And this is called the hydrocarbon chain. It's called that because it's made of nothing except for hydrogens and carbons. And they're all covalently bonded to one another. The top part of the fatty acid is called a, the head, or more appropriately, it's called the carboxyl head or the carboxyl group. So anytime you have a COO -O and an H, COO -O and an H together, that functional group is called a carboxyl group. You'll learn more about that in chemistry next year. So when you have a carboxyl end with a hydrocarbon chain together, we call it a fatty acid. And that's pretty much what fats and lipids are all about, fatty acids. They are hydrophobic, they hate water. Now, the first type of lipid I wanna talk about is a triglyceride. Triglyceride, break down the word tri, and then glyceride. And so these two terms are pretty much what the structure is going to look like. This is the most common type of fat. So anytime you think of a fat or an oil, most likely it is a triglyceride. These are the foods that you eat, the butters, the margarines, the oils, the Crisco, whatever it is, that's triglyceride. Um, their main function right here is for energy storage. They're actually so good at it, they could actually store twice the amount of energy as carbohydrates. We know that our bodies love carbohydrates to break them down for food and use them for energy, but triglycerides are actually used, they store much more energy, and so they're, but they're harder to break down, and your body likes glucose as its go-to guy for energy. But they could also use, be used in protection and insulation and keep you warm, as we talked about. The structure of a triglyceride, break down the word, three of something, and the three of something are three fatty acids. So here are the three fatty acids, and they're going to be attached to this thing called a glycerol, and that's right here. Now, this is a very simple picture of it. I'd like to use my hand model, so I have the glycerol and the three fatty acids for my three fingers. So let's look at the structure of these a little bit more, triglycerides. 
You have a very similar picture to this on your paper. And so right here we have our three fatty acids. They're all in the red. So here's a fatty acid, here's a fatty acid, and here's a fatty acid. Remember, fatty acids have a hydrocarbon chain and then a carboxyl head. So there's your fatty acid. Then there's this green thing here called a glycerol. So this green thing is a glycerol. And when the fatty acids, three of them, attach to a glycerol, we get a triglyceride. And those are your fats and oils. Now, how do we attach them? This dotted line shows how we do this. And you already know this. To attach things together, we have to remove water. So when we take out a water molecule, we dehydrate it. So it's a dehydration synthesis. And when, once we do that, you could see that the oxygen that was left over is now bonded to the carbon. And the three fatty acids are connected to the glycerol, and therefore it's called a triglyceride. Let's look at the different types of um, ways that fatty acids can be in a triglyceride. So the first one over here is called saturated fatty acids, and we have actually unsaturated fatty acids. So let's look at the saturated fatty acids first. These are terms that you've probably heard about with your food before. Hopefully you realize that saturated fats aren't really that great for you, and unsaturated is much healthier for you. So let's look at why. It all comes down to the chemical structure. Over here, we have a fatty acid. So this is actually called a saturated fatty acid. Saturated fatty acids are saturated. Saturated means to be full of something. What are they full of? They're full of hydrogen. So when you look down the hydrocarbon chain, there's no more place for any more hydrogen. Therefore, it is saturated. And when it's saturated, it takes on a very streamlined, straight structure. And that's very important because if all the fatty acids are straight, they could pack very well together. And when they pack very well together, they become solid at room temperature. So your saturated fatty, ac fatty acids create saturated fats like butter. Now the second type of fatty acid or triglyceride, they could be unsaturated. Unsaturated means not saturated or not full of something. And the thing that they're not full of is hydrogen. So they're not full of hydrogen. You could see that in this structure, we actually have a space right here where we could probably fit a few more hydrogens if we really wanted to. But there's, they're not there. Instead, we have this double line. This is called a double bond. So the carbons are double bonded to each other instead of the single bond, which we see up here. When they double bond to each other, it causes the structure to kind of bend. You can see there, there's a kink or a bend in it. And that's important, that bend or kink, because it allows the fatty acids not to pack well. And when they don't pack well, they're going to be liquid at room temperature. So our unsaturated fatty acids are our oils at room temperature instead, all because they have a double bond, they're not full of the hydrogen because they're double bonded, and they have a kinked or a bent structure. There are actually two different categories of unsaturated fatty acids. You can actually have monounsaturated or you can have polyunsaturated. When you have monounsaturated, it all it means is there's one kink or one bend, one double bond. But if you have more than one double bond, which causes more than one kink or bend, it's called polyunsaturated. Polyunsaturated is definitely the healthiest for you. The more it kinks, kinks and bends, the healthier it is for your body because it won't be stored away as fat. Saturated would be the worst for you in these scenarios. Notice a straight, streamlined structure that allows it to pack as a solid fat. Okay. All right, next I want to talk about is these two pictures. Here's your fatty acids again. but. I want you to notice there's no double bonds in this carbon, 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 carbon. So this one up here is a saturated fatty acid. Not very healthy for you. But down here, you could see we actually have three of these carbon, carbon double bonds. And that actually allows it to kink or bend, and that's healthier. Because there's more than one, we call it a polyunsaturated fat. Healthiest for you. Um, <clears throat> If there's only one, we call it a monounsaturated fat. Now, I also want to point out that some of you are like, wait, there's a double bond right there. But it's between an oxygen and a carbon, not the carbon and carbon. So we only look between the carbons for the double bonds. That causes the bender kink. This is a picture that, that is actually on your paper. And so we have the glycerol in blue right here. In, in black and red, we have the three fatty acids. And those fatty acids could be saturated or unsaturated. No double bonds. This one is saturated. Notable bonds, this one is saturated. But in the third fatty acid, we have the double bond, and so it kinks or bends, and this one is unsaturated. So overall, 
This is a unsaturated triglyceride. Remember, three fatty acids in a glycerol is a triglyceride, but because one of them is unsaturated overall, it's a mono one unsaturated fatty acid. It's a mono unsaturated triglyceride. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. This picture is actually showing how they would pack. So these are fatty acids, and it's just showing that they have a very straight structure, and if I try to squeeze all these together, they would fit very nicely and pack. So this would be a saturated fat. Over here, this would be more of a, an oil at room temperature and be considered unsaturated because it has a double bond that is causing the fatty acids to kink. And so if I try to squeeze all these together, they would not want to because all these fatty acids are kinking and bending in some sort of way. And therefore, because they don't pack, it's going to be oil at room temperature. Now, there's two different types of um, ways that you could be unsaturated. So it all has to do with the double bonds. Anytime we talk about double bonds, we're talking about something that is unsaturated, double bonds. The bonds could be in a cis or a trans conformation. And so what that means is when we look at the unsaturated fats, okay, you're looking at this one, I don't know why, but there should be a double bond right there. It causes it to kink. When the hydrogens are on the same side of the double bond, same is cis. So this is a cis fatty acid. Okay. These are really good. These are the natural ones that usually occur in oils, like your olive oils. But over here, sometimes you have the double bond, which makes it unsaturated, but the hydrogens are on opposite sides from each other instead. Because they're across from each other or opposite, we call it trans. This is a trans fatty acid. As soon as it's a trans, it takes on a very straight structure, and that's not a very healthy thing. And so um, you probably have heard of trans fats and why they're so bad. Trans fats are actually created in a process called hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is when companies chemically process their food so it lasts longer on a shelf. And so we're going to actually look at in class, I'm not going to explain it here because it will take too long, but we're going to look at in class and how hydrogenation makes trans fats and why that's bad and how you could avoid it on the label even when it says that there's zero trans fat when there possibly is trans fat in the food. So we will look at that later on. And then we're going to look at this too. This is part of how trans fats are made. Okay. I want to go over the last three types of lipids real quick. The last three types of li lipids are called phospholipids. Phospholipids are the only one that has phosphorus. So remember the CHO and sometimes P, this is a sometimes P. So they are phospholipids. These are the guys that make up cell membranes. So cells which make up our entire body, the outside part is called the cell membrane, and that cell membrane is made up of these types, is made up of fat, it's made up of lipids, called phospholipids. And they kind of have this structure that looks like a head with two tails, and here it is right here. So there's a head part with two tails. The tails are fatty acids, so these are two fatty acids. One of them is unsaturated, one of them is saturated. And over here we have, here's the glycerol, and the two fatty acids are attached to the glycerol. But instead of the third fatty acid, like in a triglyceride, we have something with phosphorus. We have a phosphate-containing group called the phosphate group. And this phosphate group loves water. So they are in love with H2O. So they will go anywhere, anywhere water is. But remember, our fatty acids are a lipid, and they really hate water. So they hate H2O, and they don't want to be by it at all. So it actually will form something called a phospholipid bilayer. That means two layers of phospholipids. All the tails are on the inside because they hate water and there's no water in there. And all the phosphate heads are on the outside because that's where the water is. So if we look up here, the water is on the inside and the outside of a cell. And that's where the heads are pointing, to where there's water. The tails are pointing to the inside where there's no water. Cells can, so it makes a nice membrane to hold everything inside and keep the cell how it should be working. All right, so here's a quick difference between phospholipids and triglycerides. The triglyceride has a glycerol, oops, with three fatty acids, and the phospholipid has a glycerol with two fatty acids and a phosphate head that makes that part water-loving instead. We call it hydrophilic. 
All right, the last two types are steroids and then waxes. We have steroids over here. Steroids function as hormones, so they are chemical messengers. They don't contain any fatty acids, so they are unusual because almost all fats have fatty acids. This is the exception. This is why fatty acids are the monomer-like part because steroids don't have them. Instead, they make these ring structures that stick together. There's actually four ring structures of carbons and hydrogens instead. We have cholesterol, estrogen, testosterone, serotonin, insulin, dopamine, oxytocin. There's tons of hormones in your body that regulate everything that's going on, thyroid hormone, growth hormone. There's tons and tons of them. But the basis for all hormones is cholesterol. That's how all these other guys are made. And you could see they're pretty much all very similar. They have this four ring structure that makes them a lipid. And they are hydrophobic. They don't like to be by water. Most of the time we think of steroids as, hey, let's build some muscles, let's take some anabolic steroids. But that's only one type of steroid. There are many other ones inside of your body. And that main one is called cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually found in your cell membranes and makes all the other hormones. Cholesterol is a lipid. It doesn't like to be by water. And because it doesn't like to be by water, it needs to be carried in your body by a little taxicab. That little taxicab is called a lipoprotein. So lipoproteins carry cholesterol and fat to all your cells. Your cells need cholesterol. Actually, when you look at your phospholipid membrane, your cell membrane, there's cholesterol that's stuck inside of it. It keeps it evenly spaced how it should be. Here is a structure of cholesterol with the four rings. There's actually two different types of cholesterol. There are, there's good and bad, but really what good and bad stands for is a type of lipoprotein that's carrying the cholesterol. So there is LDL, which stands for low density lipoproteins, and there's HDL, which stands for high density lipoproteins. LDL is actually the bad one because there's more fat in it, and that's not good. HDL is a good one because it has a high amount of protein. So this one has a low amount of protein, so it's bad, and this one has a high amount of protein, so it's good. You always want more protein than fat. And what a lipoprotein actually does, it looks like a big ball. This ball acts as a taxicab, and inside of it, it carries all the purple blobs inside of here are protein, and all the yellow and pink stuff that's in hot inside of here are lipids. And over here is phospholipids. The cholesterol is being carried inside of it. And so when these carry cholesterol inside of your blood and there's too much fat in it, what it does, it sticks on your arteries and causes clogged arteries that could lead to heart attacks and strokes. And you could see the blockage forming over time if you have really high cholesterol that is high in LDL. So if this number is high, you have a problem. You probably have high cholesterol. But you do want your HDL levels to be high. Your HDL levels, that's your good cholesterol, and you need that in your body. Your your liver makes it, but sometimes our LDL outweighs our HDL. And so if you ever to get your cholesterol taken, you'll have those two numbers, and the doctor will tell you that one is, if you have high cholesterol, that your LDLs need to come down and your HDLs need to go up. HDLs actually prevent buildup. They actually act sort of like a Drano, and they clean out the pipes or they clean out your blood vessels so the plaque doesn't form on the outsides of them. So that's a good thing with that. We'll talk about a little bit more about cholesterol in class. The last type of lipids is one I'm not really going to touch on much, except that mention that it exists. Wax is a type of lipid. It hates water. And in plants, it's good for waterproofing their leaves and stems and not allowing the water to be absorbed into the plant and causing them to swell. But in us, when we make earwax, which is a type of wax, it actually repels any sort of a de debris and actually collects dirt and things that shouldn't be going inside of your ear canal. And they're made of really, really, really long fatty acids. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, um, so I know that was a long video with a lot of information. So come to class with all your questions prepared. And I will definitely hit all these topics one more time in class. And I hope that was helpful. Thanks. Bye.